42nd Commonwealth Convention in Springfield, Missouri. Today is March 31st, and the name of this session is Teaching Tips for a Condensed Teach Plan. I, Bill Harrison, along with Jerry Story, are your moderator and panelist. If we have Q&A at any point in time during the session, please, before you say anything, raise your hand. We'll make sure you get a microphone. When you receive the microphone, state your name, where you're from, and then your question. So we'll make sure that everybody in the room has their opportunity to ask in a good fashion, okay? So, did you want to say something? Um, yeah, just to answer the, the question, people have seen the color of the, the, the color of condensed teaching method the great document that was introduced this past year. Uh, for the last 15 or 20 years, we've used the Club 50 program, which is very similar to this, and a lot of callers are using that today. And it doesn't matter which one of these programs you use. It's not a program that they're gonna uh, uh, probably stay at long anyway. They're either going to migrate on up to mainstream or, or plus, whatever the area calls for. But the initiative that's being put forward now is to stop and dance dancers at the 50 call level and hopefully we can replenish that base. With that in mind, it doesn't make any difference which one of these documents you teach by. It doesn't really make any difference. If it becomes a problem, that's a good problem. If it becomes a problem, that means there's all kinds of dancers dancing 50 calls all over the, you know, the United States and we need to standardize those again so then we can, I hope that happens. I hope that someday we'll mesh these two documents and there's three or four other lists out there that people are using with 50 calls as well. I'm just going to tell you that so you don't get hung up on the content. It's the concept that we're looking at today more than the content. You understand what I'm saying? Okay? So don't get hung up on that and realize that let's try to make that work. And if it, and if it works, that's a good thing. Then we can mesh those documents together and we should be back rolling in square dancing with lots of new dancers. Yes. And, and this, this one here from Polylab can be obtained on the website, okay? So if you're interested, it's, it's a teaching uh, process. And that's what we're going to talk about today is some teaching tips in order to do a condensed process. Okay. And so, and that's exactly what this session is about today. We have some general principles. Uh, I would like to make the statement that many uh, feel finding a corner or creating a need get out and have you like that is essential, and it is. It's essential to the art of color. But our main goal is, in my mind, and I believe in Jerry's as well, is that we have to really be good teachers to keep people in the activity and be able to create those neat little things. Most of us have been in a situation where sometimes teaching somebody new and trying to get across to them what you want to do uh, can be a little difficult. Teaching to existing dancers much easier because they already understand the language that we're dealing with. We've already taught them that somewhere. So uh, please be careful about when you have new people, how you're going to talk to them. You don't necessarily have to be technical all the time. When you're planning a program, you want to write a lesson plan. How many people in the room here write a true lesson plan? Five or six. Okay? It's essential. Each individual session that you have has to be programmed. You really should not walk in and just say, well, tonight I think we're going to do this or that, and kind of just start pulling calls out of the air or off a list that you had in front of you. Uh, there are many people who will teach, uh, as Jerry had said earlier in a conversation, uh, well, I got this singing call coming up and they haven't learned this one call yet. So I think tonight that's gonna to be the call that I'm gonna teach. That should not be the way. Okay. Try to make sure uh, that you mix in your teach night, uh, a meaty type call to a couple of very easy ones. If you do that, you'll find that the process of being in a condensed process, that you're going to be able to get through it much easier. It won't be 
be a difficult task to complete. How many in here use a checkoff list? Oh, quite a few use a checkoff list. Interesting. Very good. How many actually write down the calls previously taught? Very good. You want to make sure you do those. And you want to make sure the ones you write down, you want to use in the next tip. You also want to write down things that you missed, that you may have in your program. You know, after a tip, look at what you've done, the first tip or two, say, oh, I missed these three or four calls. Don't leave it to this, write them down, and then you can look at them. You need to plan your time in such a manner that you have X number of tips. Each tip should actually be kind of condensed, especially in a shorter teach period. You can't have a 15 to 20 minute tip. They all have to be short, condensed. You've got to get whatever you need to do in that period of time. So for an hour and a half lesson with two tips, or 30 minute equals six tips. So an hour and a half, you should be striving to at least minimum six tips. It doesn't seem like you have a lot of time. Trust me, you can do it. It's easy to do. The first week of college, the introduction is more involved teach. We all realize that. We've been through that. The second time through is not as third. And then, of course, the third time through, if you get to that, it becomes less. In a condensed teaching or any class series, the time required for the first, second, and third teach may have to be adjusted, especially if you have these types of obstacles in the way, attendance issues. Try to account for that, okay? So if you say, look, I want to teach in 12 weeks, 10 weeks, 15 weeks, whatever, give yourself a cushion of some extra time that you know that you give these people caught up, because you're going to have those issues. I find it more so now in today's society that we have people missing more often than 25 years ago. I mean, the percentage has grown. I don't know how many are faced with that. How many people have that issue with people in and out, in and out? I used to have the mindset, gosh, it's frustrating. I've learned how to overcome that. You know, work with them. Uh, maybe have them come a little bit early. Do something to get them caught up. It's, it's, it's easy to do. The other happens to be weather. In our area this year, we've had a lot of snow. Uh, we've lost a lot of dances, so try to keep people. First off, coming back is the big key <laughs> because they're missing, but then to kind of keep them positive notes and encouraged about their learning process. And, and you've got to really focus on those things as well. Uh, there might be supportive area festivals or events that you may have to go dark for. So count those into your lesson. Here's some examples of a teaching plan. Okay, this is the one that Jerry had shown you here. Just a little bit of how we group the things together. Okay, and this had to be two, two different ones. I think everybody can see those. No. Well. You can. You can't see them too well. No. Okay, so like in session one, it has circle left, right, forward, and back. Promenades, wheel arounds, do -si do star left, right, swing, Alabama left, arm turns, right, left, grand, weave the ring, ladies chain, and roll away. And that's your first. <coughs> so, so when you, I have gone to other people's lessons or been at a dance where they say, hey, our new people are coming, and they just kind of take the call to that list, and they, they highlight what they've been taught. And that highlight may be in the basic one, in the basic two, and in the mainstream. You know, it's just like, I don't know if that person had something like this. I really don't know. But it's so nice to look at this. You can follow right along. Okay. Um, does anybody have any questions up to this point? Is this in the handout? It is. This is all in this. In here, right on the website. All of this is. At here. Yes. This is a. You're going to look at the calls. Don't pay attention to them. Uh, it happened to be a C1 blast that I did for some people who wanted to return back to the program. And uh, 
matter of fact, one of my students is right over there. Um, and so uh, over a weekend, I had to figure out how was I going to get all these calls in such a short period of time. So we had a Friday night, Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon, Saturday evening, a Sunday morning, and a Sunday afternoon, all three hour sessions in order to get everything in, not just the calls, but also the preface of the dance program. Okay. So this is how I had it come up. I had another friend of mine help me out a little bit. So here you can see in this type of situation. But my goal here was to show you this because this could actually be done in the condensed if you really got right down to it. If you wanted to spend that much time, with it, you could. You, you need to have some kind of control of what you're going to do in a short period of time. Okay. You got to find the right words, the right everything. So that was just an example. If you happened to go out there and do a blast, even if it was a basic blast, for some people who had danced once before, wanted to come back, it can be done. So we have program flexibility. You want to be prepared to add a couple of weeks, once again, for the cancellations. You want to consider the age of your folks in doing a condensed teach. If you have young folks, it, it will take less time. A 12-week course could take, like these young fellows over here, for example, could take them six weeks, you know, depending. Uh, an older crowd, it, you could have to allow for that. So always be prepared for that. There might be some people that come to your lessons that are not mobile enough to do them. You may have to sit down and talk to them. This may not be the type of thing that you want to do. This is individual call teaching tips, so uh, use condensed wording when you teach. Uh, do not get technical. This is in a condensed program type of teaching. You cannot be very technical. You just spend too much time talking. So for example, you know, if you're going to you know, prep a, for a square through, you, you may want to you know, just teach them two hands and, and tell them exactly how to do it. Now, what I do personally, is before I get the square through, I teach people who their partner is. It's anything that's beside them. It could be an oak tree, it could be a chair. If it's beside you, that's your partner. And then we'll talk about that. So I'll dance them. I always dance to people. I never have them standing long. Okay, that's another thing you want to consider. So I may just talk to them and say, who's your partner? And they go, oh, he's my partner. Okay, doesn't matter. Two men together, whatever. The next thing I do when I go into square through, I start telling them, well, you know, one hand and you face your partner, it's a cinch. And a lot of other places in using square through become intuitive. I do not reteach square through when I have four boys. I do not reteach square through when I have four girls together. Because if I've taught it right from the get go, the concept of how to do square through, I believe they will be able to dance that without me going and teaching them again. They will definitely do it. Half sachet, different story, more difficult. Okay, much more difficult. I would save that for some other time. Some I've watched some people, you know, and I think we've all been through this, where you've seen someone teach Grand Square, and they have the heads sit out, and they go off the sides, and they have the heads get back up, and they sit the sides out, and they walk the heads through the whole thing, and a condensed teach method, you don't have time to do that. You have to find what are the proper words I need to use to make them dance this and learn this at the same time. Okay. <laughs> Incorporate two-couple method. How many people use the two-couple method? Now there's different ways of using two-couple method. You don't have to have everybody just line up and have two couples work. You can use the heads, and then you can use the sides, or whatever the case may be. That's two couples. That's all you need. I use it a lot. Um, back when I was learning how to square dance, which was back in the 60s, we had to watch what other people did. Okay. So my, my point was, and I still say this all the time in my lessons, okay, watch what the other people are doing, because it will come your way. It's going to show up on your doorstep. <coughs> so two couple is a great way of getting people to 
watch what other people are now going to learn. In summary, plan. Don't just show up. <clears throat> teach so the dancers understand. Don't try to teach them definitions meant for callers. Okay? Teach a plan. Be flexible to help retain dancers. That's what it's all about. Okay. I'm going to now turn it over to Jerry. He has a lot of stuff for you. Nice to have you, Bill Harrison. Good job, Bill. All right. We're going to get a square and go through some uh, some different teaching uh, tips that we can show you. Maybe some stuff that's standard application that uh, you haven't thought about, and, and make sure that you're teaching efficiently. What I see happening out there, and especially in today's world, and Bill touched on it, and I want to expand on it, is the efficiency that we got to put back in our in our teaching. A lot of the sessions nowadays are only an hour and a half, two hours at the tops. And uh, where we used to teach two and a half hours, I remember when we taught three hours. So things are getting less and less, but we still were trying to pile on more and more. So we need to stop piling on, number one, and we need to slow things down and learn how to teach more efficiently. And by that, it's just simple things. How many times have you heard a caller say, okay, folks, uh, tonight we're going to teach uh, scoot back. Uh, everybody step into the center, uh, face your corner, and step to a wave, and oh, uh, hinge. Okay, now we're going to do scoot back, and uh, here's what's going to happen. Uh, and my God, it goes on and on. And he thinks he's being efficient. He thinks he's being thorough, or she thinks she's being efficient and thorough. That's not efficient and thorough. You need to learn to start teaching and calling at the same time. Get them there. Tell the boys to step into the middle of the tray. The girls fall over into this spot. The boys step back out and get them with the right hand. Use some basic calls uh, to, to get them through this stuff. And after a while, tell them, well, we're working on scoot back. Let's do it again. And that's called efficient calling. And then go back and by the time they've, you've told them what it is, they already know it. And they're on their way. And you can apply that same efficiency to every call. And we're going to go through uh, some of those calls here in just a little bit. Um, before we do, is there any questions so far that anybody needs answered? Anything that Bill said or anything? No? All right. All right, let's get a square up. How about right here? And remember, sometimes when you're teaching, we have the definition there for our benefit, uh, more so than the dancers. But it's also our responsibility sometimes to take that definition and put it into terms that uh, the dancers can understand very easily. And it might not be the definition verbatim. It, it could be a modified version of it, but that doesn't matter. As long as they understand what's happening, they can read the definition today on Tamination in two seconds. So we don't have to worry about them being educated as far as the definition. We need to educate them as to how the thing dances and the body flow to the mechanics of it. But it starts off with different things. On our Club 50 list, we put couples trade and couples circulate early in the game. As a matter of fact, we put it on as one call. Circulates are such a broad family, we wanted to narrow that down and get them doing couples circulates and couples trades early, early on in the game. Because it's so beneficial to many things that we use later on. The most important calls, I think, and I think these guys will agree with me, are runs, trades, and circulates. If dancers today can do runs, trades, and circulates, boy, we've, we've got the world by the tail. But unfortunately, as well as most of you know, runs, trades, and circulates aren't our strongest suit in this country. And that's, that's unfortunate because that's really our, our foundation. Um, so we teach those early on. Uh, and girls trade, and boys courtesy turn to girl. Wow, chain down the line. See how quick you can teach that. And both of these lists are pretty similar. If you take a look at both of them, they're both good, good documents, good lists, whichever one you want to use. They've got some really good reasons for their, their and I'm going to uh, uh, incorporate a lot of those into my teaching, and I think we have some good ideas in ours too. And one of them is to teach wheel and deal. I've seen callers just go on and on. It's just such a simple call to teach if they've been taught trades. Head step into the center and turn to face your corner. <laughs> 
right and left through. Veer left. So first you teach girls trade. Girls with your right hand, you're going to take each other's place. Moving forward, hang on to your right hand. Girls trade. I want to ask you to do that again, but this time I want you to take the boy with you. Couples trade. Hot dog. Look at there. All right. Bend the line. Pass the ocean. And so here, on, on we go. If I want to go the other way around, uh, we can do the boys run. And this is not hard for them either. Boys trade, just like the girls did. Boys hang on, take the girl with you this time. Couples trade. Cool. Bend the line. Pass through. Wheel and deal. <coughs> Centers veer right and veer left. Right and left through. So now that they know couples trades, and centers, girls trade, boys trade, centers trade, wheel and deal becomes really easy. Veer left. But before I do it, they're not even going to know they did. Couples half trade. Go halfway and then stop. Bend the line. Look at that couple in your line. They just did a wheel and deal and don't even know it. But it's a nice little technique if you're just so quick. Now, it doesn't dance that regimented, but who cares? They'll, 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 they'll smooth those corners out when they're dancing. Right and left through. Veer left. Couples circulate. All right. Hang on, girls. Couples half trade, and everybody bend the line. Look how they just blended it in right there. And the reason they did was because of the way I called it. I didn't say couples half trade, bend the line. I said couples half trade and bend the line, as if it was one call. And they went boom, 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 and they were there, nice and smooth. So that depends on your delivery and your timing. Veer left. Couple circulate. And one thing that's on this new list, uh, the new Color Lab Condensed Teaching Method, is Wheel Around early in the game. Wheel Around is a beautiful call. It's a heck of a lot better than Courtesy Turn, to tell you the truth. But we like Courtesy Turn because it's got a different definition. What's the difference in those two? Can anybody tell me? Handhold. Hmm? Yep, that's one. What else? One of them turns to the center of the set, the other one is 180 degrees. Correct. So they are different in ways, and so we need them, we need them both. But wheel around doesn't get called very much, and it's such a good, it's really a good call. And so is reverse wheel around. Reverse wheel around is probably non-existent in most clubs today. And it's a beautiful call. And all you got to do is explain something to them. Those couples looking in, when I say uh, uh, centers reverse wheel around, you're going to be doing a Ferris wheel prior to that, and when you hear the word reverse, in your mind, sometimes you think, I want you to stop and go the other direction. See, I'm correcting that problem for them right now. That's not what I mean, couples facing in. I want you to, I'm giving you the proper body flow, I want you to take it, tighten it up, and you're going to keep turning that way to face the couple behind you. Everybody Ferris wheel, and the centers reverse wheel around. Keep turning, tighten it up, keep turning, keep turning, and say, hello there. There's nothing wrong with that call at all. It's actually very good because it creates counterclockwise dancing, which is missing in our, our uh, a lot of our choreography today as well. We go to the right, to the right, to the right, to the right, to the right all night, and dancers come out and they're going, how come one side is hurting? It's because you don't unwind them. You got to get them going this way, and then unwind them. Let them unwind that thing a little bit sometimes. If you're right. So if we do a Ferris wheel now, it would be a, what kind of a wheel around in the middle? It would be just a wheel around because that's the body flow. Ferris wheel and the centers wheel around. Good. So once you get them doing the wheel arounds from here, then you can expand that a little bit and start blending some of your teaching techniques together. If you just taught them that couples half trade thing, veer left. Couples half trade. Center couples, hang on with your left hand. Center couples trade. And the center couples wheel around. Stay on your own real estate. Each line bend the line. And all plain vanilla. That's standard application choreography, but I can't call that today in America. Is that sad or am I just being over dramatic? Yes. Yes. Is that sad or am I being over dramatic? I think it's darn sad myself. But the reason is we don't call it. And it's standard application. There's goos, zoodles of this stuff. And, and I can tell you right now, we've got a lot of good things coming down the pike in Caller Lab for all the callers. We're going to start doing, uh, providing better note services of this kind of choreography. This is the stuff that we need. We need good standard application choreography. And then before dancers go to plus, we need good extended application choreography.
So when they do get to plus, guess what? They know how to dance, right? Well, let's go on and take a look at some of this stuff then, all right? Same effect if we can do that from, if you've done reverse wheel around with them, if you want to go on and, and play with them, or if you want to save it for another day, it doesn't make any difference. Once dancers understand the mechanics of wheel around, you can call it either side, either way, in a plain vanilla fashion. And going left is still plain vanilla, as far as I'm concerned. Veer right. Couples, hang on boys, half trade. Center couples, hang on girls, take me with you. Center couples trade, and the center couples reverse wheel around. Keep turning, keep turning, bend the lines. Whoops. And once they trust you and your timing is good, you can get away with a lot of things like that. And that's, would you consider that standard application or extended application? It's pretty standard, isn't it? It's left-handed, but uh, what, why does that make any difference? I was having a conversation with several callers yesterday about the, the logical order of difficulty of calls. And we went through recycle. And I asked them, and, they, and it was a, I got the typical reactions that I always get. I, I asked them, what's the logical order of difficulty to recycle? And we started going through it. Veer right, bend the line, past the ocean. This would be in a logical order of difficulty, number one. I asked them, okay, what's number two? in a logical order of difficulty. Most of them said, well, let's go to a boy, boy, girl, girl way, because one on each side is in their spot and they know what they're doing. That's on down the road. That's way on down the road. The next one in line, swing through. Boy, run, bend the line. Here's what we always, we always do it past the ocean from here and then we recycle, that's what we call it. But we don't do this, star through. Very seldom do we start it from here. And this is totally different, especially to new dancers. Pass the ocean and recycle. There's number two in a logical order of difficulty. Are you with me? Yeah? Just a nod of the head will do. Yes. Are you with me? Okay. What's number three? That's number two. What would number three be? Most people, again, would say, well, then it must be that boy, boy, girl, girl. No. Quarter time? No. Well, yeah, that would be one. Exactly. That could be another one. I'd, I'd go with that. Plain vanilla, right hand, quarter tag. That's another one. Center's recycle. All right? The next one in line is a left hand wave with the girl on the end, and I'll show you why. Right and left through. Turn a quarter more. Girls run. Boys trade. When the girl is on the end of the wave, it's so simple to explain things to them. Guys, this is exactly what you've done before, only it's different. We're going to unwind this wave. Boys, you're going to be folding out behind the girl. Girls, you're doing the cross fold. And boys, you're going to come along with her. And they will do this for you in a heartbeat. 100% most of the time. Girls think about cross folding. Boys think about going with her. Recycle. And you know what makes that easy for the dancers? It's because they, they've done reverse flutter all their life. And it's, it's no different. Pretty much the same thing. But the key Star here, through. Can I interrupt this? Yeah. The key here that, that we really want you to focus on is how he's getting them to do this. He, he's, he's not standing there and saying a, a paragraph of words in order to get them to do the wheel around or the wheel and deal. And that's the key that you have to learn in doing a condensed teach program. Okay, that's that's what you got to pick up on. I want to make sure you see that. The callers yesterday that I was talking with, there's about six of them. We're having fun, just chatting, and they challenged me on that. Several of them did. They said, "Well, I think you're wrong. That reverse, that that left-handed recycle, that's that would be harder than a boy, boy, girl, girl way because one of them know what they're doing each way." And I looked at him and I said, "Well." In that case, in that case, then you're telling me that after flutter wheel, the next easy one in line would be a boy, boy, girl, girl line flutter wheel. That's what you're saying. Because it's the same thing. Why do you think that we chose left reverse flutter wheel? It's the same thing. Because it's easy. It's 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 normal. It's standard 
uh, arrangement, and it, and it creates a counterclockwise movement that we so drastically need. Reverse flutter is the only thing we have to unwind these people. We've got to get some, and I hate callers that call uh, from a line of four, star through, and then to get to a left-hand line to go counterclockwise, they veer right. If that's in your vocabulary or, or your repertoire, take it out. Just star through and veer left or right, either one is just, it's just clumsy and awkward. Uh, the boys don't notice it so much because we always veer left, so the girls are the ones that really get screwed on that deal. And the boys don't care because they're going left anyway, but the girls got to go over here, whoop, got to go back over here. But that's what, that's what we do. So anyway, any questions so far? You understand the logical order of difficulty that we're talking about and the, the, the rationale in my mind. Wayne Weston from Texas. I think that also is easier because you end up in a normal Absolutely. couple. Absolutely. If you end up with girls together, boys together, it always makes it more difficult. Of course. And that's the logic behind the whole thing. Keep them standard, but use counterclockwise rotations. It's a beautiful thing. Star through. And before I would say veer left or right, I would call something else. I just don't like that call. Right and left through. I like that call. <laughs> All right. Uh, another thing that's this fun at some point. We usually do this at the beginning of the extended applications programs that we do in, back in Southeast Iowa. We run 50 calls, standard application, and then for those that want to go on past that, then we start showing them some extended applications and the rest of the mainstream calls. But we're building up quite a plateau of 50, 50 call dancers and they're sure having fun. And it seems like it's really easy to get new people in because we have three starts a year for them. And so when they're really hot to trot, you know, about halfway through that 12 week class, man, they're, they're, they're going, hey, I got friends that want to come. In today's markets, we've got to say, well, it'll be next year. And, and that's our problem. But in, in Fairfield, Iowa, we do three starts a year. And they think they're going to bring their friends because that's the way society is today. And it's building fast. And out of 100 people that we put in, only 30 of them chose to go on. Some of them are coming up to us saying, well, we want to go to the state convention and they don't have a 50 call hall. And so we said, no problem. If you, those that want to go on, we'll offer it. So we offered them uh, the, the opportunity to go on with the understanding that they were going to learn extended applications to all those 50 calls that they just learned, along with the mainstream calls, extended applications. And we are in the process now of writing that document here at Call Lab, so that will be available to all of you uh, very, very soon. But the beauty of that is it replaces our eroded base. See, we really don't have a base now. And in Fairfield, Iowa, we've replaced that, that base, so it's, it's, it, it really works. And out of the 100 people that we've put in, only 30 wanted to go on. What does that tell you? That 70 that didn't go on are today's discards, and that's shameful. You know, that's what needs to change in our activity. And it's this kind of stuff that's going to do it, because Color Lab already recommends two years of dancing mainstream before you go on to plus. America never adhered to that at all. And the reason is, is callers don't do their homework. Let's face the facts. If they did, it'd be a, it, they wouldn't have to go on. But if we're going to ask them to keep them in, in, in this program these, for two years, we need to help them. So we're on that too. We're going to have some, some old-fashioned uh, uh, note services coming out to callers with good choreography that, 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 that they can use. They're going to need a lot of tools if we expect them to do what Caller Lab recommends. And that's keeping dancers at a, a, a lower level and not rushing to plus. We can't survive, we can't be sustainable if we keep eroding our base. So we're going to talk about that at 4 o'clock, aren't we, Vernon? Yeah. And that's going to be in the Texas room, so come on over to that and we'll tell you a lot more about that. Um, Does we, any, anybody have any questions up to this point on, on the condensed process? Um, one, last, one last thing and then we can take, take questions and answers if you want. At some point, you're going to have to teach your dancers, I was headed to this, at some point, you're going to have to teach your dancers leaders and trailers. And we need to emphasize that more on our document. I don't have read yours thoroughly enough to, to, to know if, if you guys put that in there in, a, in an emphasized way. But leaders and trailers come into, <clears throat> come into play quite a bit. And I've got some routines I want to show you here just in about five minutes that can expand on that and have a lot of fun with the dancers. If you're building a, a program and say one week you work the wheel arounds and the reverse wheel arounds and you come back and you review that, they're doing, they're, they're, they're doing good with that. 
then you can uh, you can go on and, and, and have some more fun with them. Uh, what calls were we just talking about? Um, oh, leaders and trailers, yeah. Uh, <laughs> fear right for me, would you? All right. So if you're starting off with a normal wheel around, here's a great place that nobody calls leaders and trailers stuff from. So what I do is to start, and, and it trains some dancers to, pat, to, to, to uh, stand still and, uh, and have some discipline. The trailers, you have to stand still while the leaders are going to wheel around. So that boy backs up, leaders wheel around. That's the ones facing out. Mm -hmm. Cool. If you're facing out, you'll always be a leader. If you're facing in, you'll always be a trailer. All right? Everybody pass the ocean. Swing through. Boy run. Girls trade. Now who are the leaders? The leaders are the ones facing out. And if I ask you to reverse wheel around, that girl would back up and reverse wheel him around. Now, once they get the idea of that, we start putting some body flow to it. Past the ocean. Boy run, boy trade, leaders wheel around. Flutter wheel. So you start putting some body flow to it, you see. Past the ocean. Swing through. Boy run. Girls trade and leaders reverse wheel around. She backs up. And it teaches discipline to the trailers. They have to stand still, which is good. They have to listen. And it teaches who the trailers, uh, the leaders are. And that's a fun thing for them. I wouldn't dwell on it all night, but you can, that makes a one beautiful tip to get them to do some different kinds of wheel arounds and stuff like that, and reverse wheel arounds as well. And once again, we'll go through it so you, if you're taking any notes. Pass the ocean. If you want to do the normal wheel around, start in the left-hand line. Boy, run. Boy, trade, that creates the flow. Leaders wheel around, he's moving, he backs it right up. That's the body flow, okay? Past the ocean. If you're gonna do the reverse wheel around, swing through, start from a right-hand way, boy, run. Now watch this, as that girl facing in, watch her. The girl facing in, as she trades, her body flow will let her pick that boy up facing out and just keep backing up and wheel him right around. Watch the body flow. Girls trade, leaders reverse wheel around. Did you see how fast I had to call that to make it work, though? How would it have been if I had said, lead, uh, girls trade, leaders wheel around? How would that, or reverse wheel around? How would that have been? That would have been terrible, wouldn't it? Because I would have what? Stop. I would have stopped the body flow. Correct. So make sure when you do it, pass the ocean. Call it as if it's one call. Swing through. Boy, run around a girl. Girls trade, leaders reverse wheel around. Here we go, dance to the middle and you come on back. And it's nice body flow. But there's all kinds of things like that that we're going to be experimenting with and sending out. And we're, all the kinds of things we're going to be experimenting, experimenting with and sending out this stuff. So uh, you'll hear more about it in the Sustainable Square Dancing uh, Committee report coming up at 4 o'clock. Please be there to hear all about it. It's going to be in the Texas room. Uh, Are you Jones, uh, okay. And you guys can sit down. Give it a nice guys guys. Yeah. <laughs> the key about leaders and trailers uh, is also the terminology that we're teaching the green dancers. And it's terminology as a tool for you to teach other calls as well. So it becomes a good, uh, a good tool for you, okay? Uh, if you're searching for words on how to explain something, teach them how to, what the language happens to be that you're going to use throughout. So it's, it's, it's a good process, it really is. Are there any questions that you have uh, about condensed teaching? At all? Nobody. Comment? Yeah. A comment? Sure. Absolutely. Gary Felton, Marilyn, both of you guys talked about the things that you do and the tips before you teach. You didn't really tell us a whole lot about that, but it's clear you talked about I have to get them to know who partner is on the square through. So for a lot of the calls, there's things that you're doing, the tips, two and three tips before you get to teaching. I think that's an important part of teaching quickly. Probably. If you don't train them, I call it train, train them first. You got to get that part down too, because just hitting them with a cold, they won't have the uh, muscle memory, I guess, to do it. Right. Yes. Anybody have any comments or questions for mm -hmm. either one of us? Yeah. Oh. yeah. Tim Mariner, South Carolina. Uh, 
I've been using a form of this condensed teach method for a long time. It's one of these things where um, just the route what we're doing just didn't seem right to me. It's like, wow, the order isn't quite satisfactory to me, and I wanted to have more floor time to, to teach things differently. So I experimented around and fooled around with taking like the call recycle, which is the last call that normally we teach if you, t if you follow the current call lab uh, teach order. It's, it is the last call we teach. So I'm thinking, what well, doesn't give the new dancers hardly any time to learn the call? Because we expose it to them, and then we graduate, and, and they're done. And they're fumbling around the next time we go to a dance because recycle's being called. And all the mainstream calls are at the end. They're very heavy-ended at the end. So I was thinking, if we taught Ferris wheel early, if we took clover leaf, which is like a separate action anyway, and taught it early, if we took recycle and taught it early and gave them the floor time to practice those dance actions later on, they're going to be more proficient and, and actually probably uh, better dancers in the long run. And we're going to retain those folks because they're not going to get discouraged. Um, and, and I think that's what led us and, and led myself originally to kind of get into this mode of what can I do early to get them more successful at the end because I was tired of that route of losing people at, at graduation and then losing them a year later because they just didn't get satisfied or the club or group pushed them on they had to go on and learn plus somewhere else. Uh, I said, no, I'm not going to do that. We're going to put on the brakes. You guys aren't going to be ready to, to jump into the plus lessons and, and for another year from now or so. And, and, and I sort of, you, you, had to, you have to stick to it. You got to really have to kind of make that happen. And that evolved to a shorter condensed format with about 20 weeks as opposed to 30 weeks. Bill and I, myself, we were on the phone talking a lot together. And, and he says, you know, we have something similar going on up in our neck of the woods. So we started sharing these notes in the last 15 years and, and 10 years. And so we're, we're really kind of putting it down on paper what we're doing. And we had this item that we, were, we had, it was a 20 call a 20 lesson plan. And when ACA and, and uh, Elmer and, and decided that they, we wanted to have a little joint meeting, the biggest thing that they said, we need to get folks learning this activity faster with less material. It was like, bingo, yeah, we do. And so we start, we formed this committee between the joint organizations to make that happen. The goal was 12 weeks which is three months. Now that's why this, it says 12 week condensed teach method plan. But it doesn't have to be 12, it can be 15. It could be however condensed you need it uh, to make it work. Does it have to be the 48 calls that uh, we've selected? Of course not. You, your area might have to use some other dance actions. But it's the idea of getting a, a mindset thinking that we can do something that's teaching a little out of the different, out of the box, a little, just a little different, where we can get them on the floor and have them dance. Now, yes, there's drawbacks to these things. One is they're not going to be able to come right on out and just dance with all the other clubs because somewhere I have to teach them the other 20 calls. And it's going to be at my club maybe a half hour prior or maybe during the dance for a workshop. And if you have joint dances, like halfway dances or something in that area, they're not going to be able to go to those because our group of calls are going to, might be a little different than what they're using at, outside of this vacuum, if you will, in, in, my, in our particular dance groups. So it's, it's one of those things where um, I know in the long run that I'm going to retain these dancers and they're going to be more proficient. And if I go the route everybody else is doing, they'll be able to dance with their buddies two or three party dances and I won't see them again. So this is, this is just one of these things. We hope that you take the time to look at these new initiative ways and, and see that there are alternatives out there to the regular cookie cut that we're losing. As, as uh, Jerry is saying, 70, 75% of the people right out, right out of the bat. Um, when is it, Stephen? I'll, I'll so Bob Graves from Centennial, Colorado. I have a question. I've heard this commentary about, okay, if you teach recycle is the last call of the list, 
and we ought to figure out how to teach it earlier. One of my comment the questions is, is and I, this is an education for me, is, okay, so if you do it earlier, what is the last call you teach? Because whatever, sooner or later, there's a last call you teach. Yeah. And there has to be some mechanism to address that. And so I, I, I'm, I'm curious which one we pick. <laughs> Uh, I, I can answer that in, in my view, and I'd like to hear Tim's too. Um, it would be something that's extremely easy, uh, that, that they don't, they're not going to forget. It's not going to be something that's going to be like a spin chain through or something of that nature that they won't, they need the practice time. It'll be something that's kind of almost intuitive to them. Timmy in South Carolina, how about no paso? I mean, you know, okay, it's an arm turn action. I don't need to teach it during lessons. And since we cued the darn thing 90% of the time anyway, uh, are we really teaching anything? That could be the last call. You know, arm turn, partner left, corner right, back to the far, the courtesy turn. And it's a, it, it's a, a nanosecond of a teach. How about walk around our seesaws, which are also nanoseconds to teach. If I'm teaching slide through or California twirls or partner trades, I can do the, the other. And, and teach star through or, or, or California tour or those dance actions later as well. Maybe circle to a line is one of those actions. Uh, spin chain through probably wouldn't be the best the last dance action, but in my opinion doesn't need to be on the program, but that's just my opinion. Uh, I think if you just dance, if you're not dancing, if you're going to keep them in a perpetual learning mode, then maybe that would be an important factor. In, in my world, it's not an important factor because we dance them. <coughs> we teach them empty calls. It don't matter what I can teach last. They're going to get a whole year of dancing. You know, they're going to get all kinds of practice on it. You know, so. Uh, but I like Tim's idea because recycle is a tool. If callers want to teach that earlier on, it's a tool to to create some some different body flows and stuff. I'm all for that. I mean, that that's just kind of modernizing our uh, coming out of you know. Evolving into where we are today with our choreography, it's, it's a little bit different than, than days gone by. Yeah. Um, when, when I showed the the groupings, like lesson one and lesson two and lesson three and lesson four, they weren't just calls that we grouped in there and said, "Oh, this looks good here." There was a lot of thought that went by. How did this call end up in lesson two, and how did it end up in lesson three? So even you, when you do your lesson plan, you you think that way. You know, just don't say, well, I'll put these five here, these five here, and so forth like that. You have some tools at your fingertips. Take them, read them, become your own. But until you, yourself, decide that this is what we're going to do, change is not going to happen. It's going to have to come from you guys. Okay? I think the one thing that I've heard this week, more than any, when we talk about change, I've heard this one statement more than any. It drives me crazy. But this is what I hear more than often, more, more than not. The, 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 the callers uh, have, they, how do I want to say it? Um, just, just how you would. <laughs> <laughs> just, well, they, they, they think that they can't do it. And they think that they're being controlled by the clubs. And I hear that all the time. Well, I can't, we can't do that in our area. It'll never work in our area. We can't do that in our area. That won't happen in my area. That'll never happen. Can't do that. I'm so tired of that. I, I really do. Because if, if it's that bad, then what the hell are you doing calling for them? I mean, really, do you need that job that bad? That you can't say, you know what, I'm going to be a leader, and I'm going to buck up to you, and I'm going to say no. And, the, and, and until we do that, and you team up these clubs and run you around like a scalded hound all over town, then we're not going to ever get anywhere, guys. We've got to stand up and be leaders again. And we've got, the, I think, the wind at our back because we've got a lot of leadership here, dancer leadership here, that's going to hear this right here. They're going to hear the presentation at 4 o'clock. And I believe, with all my heart, that we're going to walk out of this convention with the wind at our back. At least I hope so. But it's going to take knocking this stuff off about, I can't, I can't, my club won't, I can't, we can't, they won't. It's got to go out the door. <laughs> Goodbye. Yes, and, and all of this takes you selling it to, if you have a group that you're working with, you know, 
learn to sell your ideas in a working situation. Lanny Beams in Bull, South Dakota. Um, and I'm going to address this strictly to, or directly to Jerry. Okay, you turned out several lessons. You've got a group of people dancing this basic 50. I know that you're not there for two, three, four months at a pop. How do you keep those folks dancing when somebody else has to call to them when you're absolutely absent and when the rest of the square dancing community is not taking care of that? We have a, a, a caller. He's, I don't know if Robin is here this morning or not. I think he's in another session, actually. Robin Reagan from Ottumwa, Iowa. Um, started lessons in Fairfield, Iowa, uh, unbeknownst to me. And when I found when I found out about it, we got together and, and talked about it. He had done three quick classes, only 30 or 40 halls, but he had like 30 or 40 people dancing right away. But they had no structure, and so I went in to call for him, and I, I would do this tip for the guys that just started last week, and I'd do this tip for the guys that had, had three classes, and I'd do a tip for those that had six lessons. And I, so we we got organized uh, basically and came up with our system that we use in Fairfield, Iowa, and that'll be what we're talking about at, at 4 o'clock. I also <clears throat> got with Robin and uh, started mentoring Robin. Uh, as I've worked with these two young lads over here, uh, this is uh, uh, Jed and Lincoln Sigmund from Wisconsin, and they're, uh, what are they, 18, 15, 18, 16, something like that. And they're doing a, a, a great job up in Wisconsin doing the, the same kind of program. Uh, and I've worked with them, we worked with Robin Reagan, and Robin was stuck in the mud. His calling, he was ready to quit. Nobody, he just couldn't find the help that he needed. Uh, he felt he only was down to about six singing calls that he would do, his, his hash, he was having trouble resolving the squares. It was just, uh, it, was, it was hard for him, he was getting ready to quit. And I could see that he was wanting to go, but he was miserable. Trying, he just couldn't get it going because of people hounding him to do this, and, the clubs in town how did to do that. So we come in and I showed him how to instill leadership in the area. And I started mentoring Robin Reagan. We've had three sessions in my home. We keep in contact with each other on a weekly basis. He'll call me and tell me what he did, how it went. He'll even tape it. I'll write back, say, here's what you did wrong, here's what you did right. Try this next week. And we are getting through this in a fine fashion. And there goes to show you that a new caller can do it too if he's got the right person helping him. So there's something else that is going to come out of this sustainable uh, square dance committee is mentoring callers that want to do this. We're not going to waste time with guys that want to argue with us and tell us they can't do it. We're going to work with the willing, and we hope that there's going to be a lot of them. Gary from Maryland. I think you've been on a more general approach that we as callers are really poor at, and that's callers working together. I've worked with three or four different callers splitting classes because well, we couldn't make all the nights or something like that. You learn four times as much working with another caller. Your That's classes right. and teaching get better. He teaches you things, you teach him things. I worked with a caller that called a few more years than I had, and I was able to teach him things, he was able to teach me things, and the classes were more successful. Correct. Something else that, that we still do this, Go to the young because this was another thing that callers said. Here's what I heard too: that well, we don't have any young people. All our people are old, and they're just going to bring us more old people. Well, here's what you do: you go to the youngest person you got and say, "Give me six of your friends." Then you go meet them, and you go, "Which one of you the youngest?" <laughs> and then you give me six of your friends. I'm being kind of facetious, but that's how you do it. You kind of work that bloodline, that age line down a little bit. So when you go to recruiting, don't go to the oldest, you know, the oldest guy there might be your best recruiter, but he's just going to bring you more old guys. Find the youngest and then infiltrate and his friends and go get the youngest and we can bring this thing down. But so many places have not had classes for so long and we've let them get so old that now we, that we don't even want to start. I was talking to Mike Hogan. Mike said, Jerry, I, I want to do this so bad, this 50 call thing. And he said, I'm going to. But he said, I got two squares here in Nebraska that I've had for 30 years, and I just can't give them up. And he said, they're just about to give up themselves, but I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to walk out on them. And I understand that, and I admire that. 
and Mike Hogan will be on board, and I admire him for doing that. But he is ready because, like he said, I've got two dozen couples out there my age that are ready to go, and I don't have the time to start another group because I'm busy, and that's the only night that I have, but I don't want to bring them into that group because the two squares that I got will run them off. So he's waiting, but he's coming on. Some of you might be in that same predicament. My heart's out to you. If you're accommodating those two squares or six couples, that's fine. But be ready for tomorrow, or we're not going to have anybody to call for at all. Ten minutes in New Mexico. As far as I know, Jerry does not know me, but I do know Robin Ray. Have for years. He came to New Mexico years ago, and he and I did a I was the caller and I gave him a guest tip and he and I called him again. This last year he had planned to come to New Mexico to a town where I call at. And he and I were going to both do lessons. I would do them one week, he was going to do them in the off week or during the week. And we were going to team up on these people. But he was coming because he could get any lessons like an Iowa. And now he has 23 people he told me. We've got over a hundred last night. We've got over a hundred dancing in Fairfield now. So you've got to work together to get this done. Just like right. Carrie said. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Oh. <clears throat> I'm Stephen Cole. I live in the greater Seattle area. Um, I think one of the things that I've been fighting with these kind of ideals is when I hear people, not just this will work in our area, but hey, how can they go to nationals if we don't teach them all the calls? How can we get them to go to state festival? And I, I think the answer is you don't care or you don't worry about it. When they're ready to go, you'll have enough for them. Don't worry about the portability right now. The portability part are the teaching the calls correctly, using them, do the wheel around, reverse wheel around, Ferris wheels, reverse flutter wheels, all of those things provide some variety. Get the muscle memory, get the things going. If you hear somebody tell you, or your, your association says, oh, we need to go to state festival. No, you don't. They'll get there. Uh, make your festival, make your dances, festival dances. Have parties where you are. Have them come to you, have the other dancers come to you because we're about entertaining, right? We're here to entertain. I can teach them forever. Ugh. I want to dance. So I think that's what I was thinking earlier when I was, when I was listening to Tim talking about, hey, how do we do, how do, we do this thing? You're not going to teach all the calls. You know, I could teach a, a thar figure in a dance if I wanted to, and then use it all night, and then at the end of the night, I've taught the thar thing, and it's, we can move on. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not stressing over, over portability in the sense of the list. I mean, I'm, uh, as chair of a major committee, I'm, I'm, I sometimes worry about the list, and I still am worried about the list. But at the same time, I know that if I'm in the privacy of my own area, my own group, I don't have to worry about, can they go to the Washington State Festival? Can they go to Oregon? Can they go anywhere? They'll get there. Let's get them dancing and keep them dancing. Efficiently, that's the key. So don't don't rush them along. Well, we have about 15 more minutes. We brought the cards. <laughs> Correct. So, if anybody does, anybody have anything else to make a comment or uh, questions? Nobody does. Well, I'll give you one one other thing. Cool. Thank you. Wait. Road work. I need the exercise. Me too. I'm trying to get my girl's finger. Stephen Cole again. Uh, I used to work as a professional educator, and when you build your lesson plans, um, one of the problems we have is callers. I had this problem. I am guilty as charged. I'm not saying, hey, I never. Yeah, I had. I was an apprentice of observation. Right? The apprenticeship of observation. I taught as I was taught. I worked as I was working. And I am guilty of showing up and thinking, oh, what am I going to teach tonight? Well, we need to do some column stuff. I'll touch a chord, that's what's going to go in. And some column circuits. So, work on the lesson plan. 
And I, I was just thinking that maybe next year I should volunteer to teach how to write lesson plans. Because it's not just what am I teaching tonight, but how am I going to make these blend over time? Don't just show up and work the material that you think should be worked. You should have an idea of how this is going to end. Not just, well, we're going to keep teaching until you know everything. Hmm, it's scary. There is, um, there's a couple great resources for those that have been, that have been educators. Um, one of them talks about how, what you do to maintain retention. So when you teach a call, take, say you teach spin chain through on an, on an evening, and you teach it to them and you work it for them for, forever, and you think they got it. And if you never come back to it, they're not going to keep it. The, there's a, actually some, some physiological processes that happen in the brain that require you to <coughs> teach something, do something else, and come back to what you taught. And you can't do that unless you make a plan. So you make the plan, you need about a 20 minute break. If you don't give the dancers or anybody you're teaching anything 20 minutes between the time you introduce it uh, and then the time that you review it, it becomes new learning. Do you really, do you want to teach 10 weeks or do you want to teach one week 10 times? And it, that's the difference. And if you do what you've always done because that's how you saw it, then it's time that you sit down, just like I sit down, and I create a plan. And I'm trying to do more, I'm trying to do better, and I'm trying to do some, I'm going to be doing some work through the, my committee work here. But make a plan, or use this plan, right? Use, if you don't have one, if that's not your thing, borrow, research, steal somebody else's. Yes, that's uh, one of the main things I said a little bit earlier, not quite as eloquently as uh, Stephen did, was that the, the, the thing that I put up there on the screen, it just wasn't thrown together. It, it took time to put those five calls in that particular week. And what were those five calls going to be? And a lot of it has to do with what he just kind of stated. So ask people, research, take, use. All this information is here. Paul Hansen from Tennessee. <clears throat> One thing you've got to remember, too, if you go to go out and you, and you go to call, let's just say I'm calling at a certain time, and then I ask, I've gotten sick, or I've had to go to the hospital, or someone dies, or whatever, Jerry, would you take my class? Keep those notes going and explanations of what you did that week and what didn't work. So when he comes in, he knows where the class is. Uh, you're going to have problems if you don't pass all good information to these people, because they've got to assume, I've got to start off and kind of all over again, and see if they do trades, and they do this, and they do that. Okay, so keep those records, it's very important. Is your stuff on the thumb drive? Um, no, it's not. Um, the question was, is the uh, booklet, or is that what you're talking about? Or the PowerPoint. Uh, the PowerPoint present. No, it's not. No. Um, I can send it to anybody who wants it. I can send that to you via email if you wish. If you would like a presentation on PowerPoint, it'll be on the Word document. But the booklet is on the website. Uh, so you can download that and it has all of the groupings and so forth like that. Oh, okay. uh, Tim from South Carolina again. Uh, one of the other things is that we're all here in this, I'm really pleased to see a room full of folks in here, but we're here because we want this continual education. We're here to learn some things. And how can you be more effective in your teaching? And this is why I think most of us are in this room. And little things, that, that sometimes even we as collar coaches don't get the time because we have a full curriculum we got to rush through and we don't get a chance to say all that we wish we could uh, in, a, in a given time frame. But something as simple as teaching the call, whatever the caller concept is, from its biggest state and then working to the smallest state is sometimes a more effective or, or approach to teaching. Uh, for example, if you're teaching circulates, then, then the biggest one is the couple circulate. You, so you want to go to the biggest item and teach that so they, can, they have a handhold with somebody and they, they, they learn where the next position is. They're seeing it as couples first and they're together taking hands. Then you let go and say the ends do it, now the centers do it, 
and you turn somebody around and say, same ends do this, or end centers do that. You run somebody and you get them going the other direction, circulating that way. You turn someone else around and now they're going counterclockwise or clockwise, maybe the boys in the middle. And, and now you're taking an effective tool, which is teaching big, working to the smallest one, and later on you're teaching circulates, where in your box of four, or splits, or what have you. And, and now they know the, the concept of what a circulate is. So by teaching the concept at its largest state first, going to the smallest state will, will actually help. You, and there's a lot of actions that you can do that with. Uh, trades is another one. The biggest trade is couples trade. So you teach couples trade from two face lines. I teach <coughs> couples trade from lines looking out. They, they learn there's a passing rule, how to get around each other. And then I teach the hand trades, the right hand, the left hand, centers, ends. Then you have disconnected trades where you have lines facing out. You can say, boys trade, girls trade. Turn somebody around, they have waves. Now you can teach leaders and trailers. The leaders trade, trailers trade, those sorts of things. And then the smallest of trades is the partner trade. And, and, but they understand the big concept, working down to the smallest state, and, and uh, that's a, a very effective tool for teaching. And, and again, it applies to a lot of calls. I just want to ask out of curiosity, uh, how many folks here that do teach, do you actually contact other callers in the area to talk about things that they're doing and have like that and how they're teaching? Yeah, very good. That's essential. It really is. Uh, sharing and finding out what other people do is is healthy. Jerry, you have anything you want to hit up on? I think you guys covered it, man. You please. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the session. It's been a pleasure. Let's give Jerry a nice hand. Also, uh, Tim, Bill, thank you. And a nice hand for that. They did a lot of work on this topic. Enjoy your convention, what have you. Uh, you have a four o'clock session, you said, on, on furthering on. We've got choreo at 1030, and we've got uh, sustainable square dancing. Y'all will hear about that at four o'clock. Okay. Have a good one. Thank you.